April 24th, back to that. Masvidal Usman. Oh, what I was saying was they wanted to repay. Much like Dana said he was going to go to Tachi Palace when things open up in California. I think they wanted to repay Jacksonville because they opened up the arena back in uh, May of last year. So they couldn't have just gone. And this is known. I love the Rose Namunas Zhang Wei Li fight is tremendous. Valentina Shevchenko versus Jessica Andrade is tremendous. But I think they felt like they needed to stack the deck in order to get a full capacity 15,000 fans at this arena. And so what do you think of the fact that they're going with Masvidal versus Usman? And a lot is made of the fact that, A, Masvidal is getting a title shot after not fighting since the Usman fight. Oh, quote unquote, full camp. But really, it's not really a full camp. It's a month and a half away. So it's <laughs> like he's getting a full camp. Like, how do you feel about this? Because I see a lot of people upset that Masvidal got the nod and not someone like Colby or, you know, another top Walter White contender. I like it. I mean, I like it. You know, we talked about this a few weeks ago, right? It's clearly the biggest fight that can be made at Walter White in a sense that uh, eyes. Is it the most competitive fight? Mm. The most competitive fight, I think, is Colby Covington every time versus Kamaru Usman. But Masvidal brings eyes. Masvidal's a star. Um, he's a guy that people want to watch. And Usman is healthy. He's ready to compete. And he wants to try and right the wrong of the last fight. Granted, he won the fight 49-46 across the board. But it wasn't as appealing as he would have wanted it to be with the rivalry that accompanies this fight. So um, I think it's a great fight. I think I'm, I'm happy about the fight. I think it's going to draw eyes. They're both from Florida. So the fight's in Florida. It's, 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 it's a big deal, man. And you got to stop getting hung up in the, well, this guy lost and this guy won, this guy lost. At times it just doesn't go like that. Like we, we talked about this last week with the Gustafson situation and other situations um, myself, like there's just a lot of different factors that play into title fights and you can be sad about it. You can be okay about it, but there are times where it just works out in a certain way. Like there's no other explanation as to why it works out that way. They look Honestly, at the board and say, you know what? I'm taking Masvidal. That's the guy. Well, first of all, the champ called him out. So you yes. got to give the champ, you know, the respect if, if he's going to call out, Masvidal say that's the guy I want, then hey, listen to the champion. By the way, it's the most lucrative of the, the fights that yes. they can make. That's obviously not the only reason. But, you know, he took the fight on a week's notice. He saved the day. I'm fine with rewarding him. By the way, you know what I love most about this? I love the fact that it's happening next month. Masvidal may not like it, but remember, the original plan was Ultimate Fighter, and then they'd fight late yeah, summer. Yeah, going to take Oh, yeah, you was, said that last week. So you like to say, relax, DC was wrong. Yeah, last week, you're all, that oh, was, the fight's not happening until the fall. That so was the plan. Maybe, maybe, Listen, that was the plan. Everyone was, was talking wrong. about it. No, well, plans can or change. Or did you know, and you just weren't telling No, me. no, no. I, 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 that, I said what I knew, but plans changed. They called the audible because they decided to go to Jacksonville, and they realized that they needed that big florida main event in the uh you know the top of the bill but here's the thing i love this because it's good news for colby it's good news for leon it's good news for wonder boy it's good news for Kesa. this division needs to it to keep rolling moving. right and so now we'll have a little more movement activity clarity and hey props to usman you know he's going two and a half months between title fights this isn't the norm these days for ufc champions right so he fought in mid-february he's fighting a little over two months later in uh, april so I, I like this very much and, and what a great card i mean those three title fights are phenomenal so everyone was like get, belly like, aching title fights three title fights on multiple cards back to back and they would have had two if not for volkanovsky but i spoke to usman on the morning the fight got announced he was in Vegas about to train with all the guys. Mm. At the end of the day, I asked Ali, is Usman going back to Colorado? He goes, he's already there. So like the dude knew, mm. but he understands right back to Trevor Whitman, right back to getting back locked in and in tune to go and defend this belt against Jorge Masvidal. It's going to be great. Look at you getting scoops. Look at you getting scoops. It's not a scoop. I was talking to him on the phone. Just, you know, oh, just that's buddy. the reporter in you. I like it. You're asking questions. You're trying to find things out. That's good. That's good. Oh, okay. Starting okay, to rub good. off. Thank you. No, I'm Thank giving you. you props, dog. You're helping me out, dog. Um, and then in addition to that, they they make the Corey Sanhagen, TJ Dillashaw fight, the Cody Garbrand, Rob Font fight. We can that's talk all about those on the fights. same card. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's say, in May. Come on, man. That's in May. We'll have time to talk about those fights, but uh, that I mean, Cody versus. Uh, excuse me, not Cody. Well, the Cody fight is great, but the Corey fight, Corey oh, Sanhagen versus TJ Dillashaw is just tremendous. Yeah, 
is just tremendous. Um, so for now, though, let's focus a little bit on UFC 260 because that is the next one. Mm -hmm. It's coming up this weekend. It's a fight that is, uh, I'm sure, of great interest to you because you're the last guy to fight Stipe. You'll be calling it. By the way, what's it going to feel like to call a Stipe fight after going through all of that with him? No, nothing. It'll feel just like normal. I've called Stipe's fights before. I went to Cleveland and interviewed Stipe. You know, I know sure. it was all prior to yeah. us fighting, but the reality is, man, as I look back on that and 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 who Miocic is as a person and everything, I don't, it's not not a big deal to me. No bad blood. Guy's a good dude, fantastic fighter, great father, great husband. And um, yeah, I'm excited to go watch him compete and see if he can hold off Francis. It's gonna be it's gonna be tremendous. I, I have no like honestly. No ill will towards Stipe Miocic. Hell, probably get a detail on Stipe. You won't get any, like, th there won't be any DC footage in there. I mean, I've seen oh, enough of that, that this week. I mean, it's just con <laughs> constantly seeing footage of, footage of me getting beat all week as the guy gets ready to fight. But, um, yeah, no ill will towards Stipe, man. It is what it is. The guy won the fights. Happy to hear that. Not surprised. Uh, in fact, I spoke to Stipe late last week, and it's an interview that will be coming out tomorrow. Sort of one of those, like, fancy ones that we're doing in this yeah, yeah. digital era like i did it with connor and izzy so good to give your the champ all shiny your face look all shiny on that one too i want i don't know what you mean about sometimes the shiny. you just put vaseline all over your face oh, when you wow. go to interview people like Damn. Your face look all shiny like oily yeah you look oily i'm like what are, what are you what are wow, you doing okay. to your face they uh, think it they th espn thinks you're too good looking so then they start wow. like delay you know they start pixelating oh. your face a little bit okay wow i didn't uh <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. Now I'm going to be even more self-conscious. Uh, no, uh, uh, the only reason I brought that up, by the way, thank you for making me feel bad, is uh, I asked him about you and he echoed your sentiments saying no bad blood, father, legend. He'll shake your hand when he sees you. So it's nice to see that you guys, he tried to downplay the whole thing. I was like, Steve, I mean, I'm no fool. There was bad blood at one point. Like you well, were mad. Was, like I yeah. felt that way too, right? right? I was very frustrated when I lost the second fight and it took so long for the third fight to happen. That right. Just what it is, man. Whenever, whenever two guys want to fight and they want to be champion, that's is what it is. But I'm glad it was tied to him instead of somebody else. So this time he's fighting Francis. Great to see that mm -hmm. Francis is getting that title shot once and for all. Of course, we found out the bad news on Saturday. No Volkanovski or Tega. Volkanovski has COVID. It sucks when you're an Australian fighter because you have to go through the whole quarantine process again. So maybe we'll see it in the late spring, early summer. We hope if he makes a a, a full recovery, we wish him the best. But yes. Is he here? Is he in the U.S.? He's in or Las he Vegas. Still? Yeah, he's already so in Las Vegas. Why wouldn't he just stay here? He should just stay. I mean, because if he goes back, right, didn't it take Dan Hooker like six weeks to get back into the country? Well, Dan Hooker is New Zealand. He's Australia. So the rules are a little different. Okay. But yes, okay. I mean, uh, his teammate Brad Riddell was forced off the card this past weekend against Gregor Gillespie. So I think he's going to go home, and then he's going to try to do it again later on this year. But this fight, this main event, is so great. I remember the first fight in Boston. You were the co-main. You versus Vulcan Ozdemir. Co that first round. Co-headliner. Co okay, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, same thing, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. Fair enough. Because sometimes co-main gets used a little bit too freely. Yeah. I gave the first round of Francis versus Stipe my, my round of the year award for 2018. They went crazy. Everyone thought I was crazy for saying, but DC, the tension. Remember? Because because Francis was coming off the Overeem knockout. Everyone thought that he was going to knock Stipe's head off into the third row. <laughs> he weathers the storm and then wins the fight. And again, DC, I don't know if you saw this, again, Stipe's the underdog, the betting underdog going into this fight. This is crazy to me. That happens. That happens, though. These, the, 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 the public, they fall in love with the knockout, mm. right? And it happens, right? Like, Honestly, I was an underdog against Rumble twice, right? So it's like, it just happens when a guy really? looks- Even so, the second time. Even the second time, I was wow. the underdog against Rumble. So it's like, when you get a guy like Stipe, right? Who's kind of blue collar, right? And he doesn't just knock people out. You watch Francis and Francis is like, you're just waiting for the dynamite to explode. And once the dynamite explodes, it's over. He had Stipe hurt a couple times in that first round too. Stipe walked through some big shots to get takedowns. And I don't know if he can do that again this weekend. He has to be very careful taking some of the shots he took against Francis in the first fight because, man, that could put his lights out. Fascinating fight. I want to see what improvements Francis has made because now it's three years, right? Mm. 2018, January mm -hmm. to 21 in, 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 April, in March. Three years for Francis to get better. Not much time spent in the octagon, right? So... What happens to Francis Ngannou 
when the fight gets long? What happens if he can't put Miocic out of there? And Miocic is as tough and durable as they come. What happens to Francis? Does those memories of that fatigue that he felt back in Boston start to set in and start to re-show themselves? How does he combat that? And how does Stipe approach this big dude in a smaller octagon where he knows what's going to happen early? He knows that Ngannou is going to explode into him. How does he weather the storm again? There are a, there are a number of factors and storylines going into this fight. And I think it's crazy because if Francis Ngannou becomes the champion with his fighting style, we may see a heavyweight champion with star appeal mm. in the UFC that we have not seen since, I mean, who? Who's the last heavyweight champ to just really, truly capture the imagination of the general public, the sports world? Have we ever had one? Yeah, well, we've had greats. Obviously, Cain Velasquez. We've had great ones. I'm saying, Pepe, who's uh, the next guy Randy that Couture. I'm not talking about just being a great champion and, and known. I'm Brock, talking about Brock. Brock. Brock yeah. Lesnar was the last guy that truly just captured right. the imagination of the entire sports world, a guy that everybody just wanted to see. Right. With Francis in fighting style, if he can become the champ, everybody's going to tune in because he's so massive. He's not normal. People want their heavyweight champion to not be normal. And I'm not calling Stipe normal. He's a big guy, but he's not hulking. And he doesn't mm -hmm. knock people out in 10 seconds. And he's not, he doesn't have clips of knocking over Reem's head to the moon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he just doesn't have those clips. So if this dude, this dude is on the cusp of something very big. But with all that, Ariel, comes pressure. Mm -hmm. How's he going to handle that pressure when Miocic is in his face? Because Miocic is a dog. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.